welcome all of you today we will be discussing the last topic of the module or uh, that is uh, automatic voltage control okay so so far in the previous uh, three lectures we have been discussing about the load frequency control that is how uh, the speed is being adjusted to control the frequency of a particular uh, like uh, output output of a machine okay output of a power system so for that we have used the turbine speed governing system that is by controlling the steam valve mechanism we have controlled the speed thereby control the frequency of the system now in this case that is the second part of the automatic generation control is by controlling the voltage here we are controlling the voltage of the output voltage of the generate okay output voltage is being controlled here now we will discuss in detail about what is this automatic voltage control and the simple modeling of this automatic voltage control system now before moving to that we should know these are the things that we discuss in the load frequency control now let's see which all part we require in this voltage control so so far we have discussed in the load frequency control the entire thing that is the frequency part now today we will be discussing the main part of this voltage control that is how this output voltage is being controlled this is the voltage control section the voltage of the generator or the output voltage of the generator can be controlled by controlling the excitation of the generator what is what do you mean by excitation of a generator a generate for a generator to work it should have a magnetic field so the magnetic field is uh, provided by the field winding and for providing magnetic field that field winding to be connected to a dc supply okay so for that uh, we are using an exciter so that magnetic field is provided with the help of a exciter okay so that voltage is to be controlled so if you are controlling that voltage indirectly the magnetic field is controlled and indirectly the output voltage is also controlled clear so in order to control the output voltage of the generator we are controlling the exciter voltage so this is the winding that is a field winding and which is connected to an exciter this exciter is being controlled so we are going to study how this control takes place okay when you compare this control with uh, the load frequency control can you say which one will be faster whether the load frequency control response will be good or uh, the air voltage control response will be good or fast obviously this will be fast why because in the load frequency control lot of machines are included isn't it so machines are always having some inertia so this thing has very large time constant whereas here it there is no moving part associated with it just power electronic control is being done here so it is uh, not that much like response time is very less so here the time constant is very less okay so this i have mentioned just for your information so um, you should keep in mind that uh, comparing this load frequency control and voltage control the response time is greater for very high response time is required for the load frequency control whereas low response time is required for this excitation control okay now we will look into this uh, this entire thing uh, so this is our generator so what is the control mechanism adopted here that is what we are going to discuss in today's lecture now you see so this this is our generator okay this is our generator and this is the field winding of that generator or rather this is the exciter excitation part of the generator okay so uh, this is the main field which is to be excited so in order to excite this particular winding we have this entire control mechanism here this entire control mechanism is used to provide excitation to this winding now in practical case how this field is being excited practically it is given supply with the help of a generator dc generator and this dc generator has a winding this dc generator is called exciter or main exciter 
okay and this main exciter has a field winding we call that by the name exciter field so this is the exciter field and this is the generator field okay don't get confused so for the generator to work it should have a magnetic field that magnetic field is provided by a dc supply that dc supply is provided by a dc generator and that dc generator's field is this which is called exciter field i hope it is clear okay now uh, how this output voltage is controlled that is output voltage here we have that vt vt is a terminal voltage or output voltage of a generator how this is controlled this is controlled by controlling the excitation now let's see how this everything happens over here now before proceeding that we need to know what all are the different parts of this exciter i mean uh, controlling mechanism it has a potential transformer what is a potential transformer does potential transformer will step down this uh, load voltage to a suitable value which is being which can be sampled and measured okay so a sample of that voltage is uh, sensed with the help of a potential transformer this is the actual uh, like uh, terminal voltage and this terminal voltage is compared with a reference voltage and what is done doing all these things a differentiator or a differencer okay and what would be the output of that comparator an error signal we have an error signal and that error signal is being amplified with the help of an amplifier which has a gain particular value okay and uh, in order to compensate that error you have that particular error you have an scr power amplifier okay and uh, whose output will be in such a way as to excite this exciter field in order to reduce that error okay so depending upon the excitation of this exciter field the exciter will produce a dc supply that is the exciter voltage okay and which will excite your generator in such a way that it will produce an output voltage which is in such a way that your error is minima so this is the uh, just logic of a block diagram that anyone can explain by looking into this block diagram but in order to model all these things let's move on to this further detail okay so for modeling the first part is what we have a terminal voltage a reference there is an error and there is an error amplifier your error amplifier uh, we are assuming to be a gain particular value of gain ka okay. okay an amplifier is having a gain particular gain okay and this is given to an scr power amplifier which we are assuming see scr power amplifier and exciter field we are assuming whose transfer function is this we are not simply modeling assuming a transfer function this because that is only the scope of our syllabus so uh, ke represents what the gain of the error error amplifier and exciter and uh, this is the tef represents what do you call the time constant time constant for the exciter field okay exciter field f represent field okay so this is the what sorry this is the uh, case for this entire thing xi power amplifier along with this xr exciter okay now what is remaining we do have a main exciter and main field remaining now let's see how is it done similarly the alternator the alternator is having that main field right so here uh, the function is normal or transfer function is represented by like this kg divided by 1 plus tg of kg represent generator or alternator gain and tg represent time constant of generator field okay so now we, we are done with it now another thing is now what can be the another factor which can affect that is the load so whenever there is variation in the load it will affect the voltage so you can say that your voltage is proportional to some value of load okay so we are that also we are not modeling here in in our scope we are just modeling it to be a particular value uh, which is represented by a block gl gl means a value which depends upon the load okay so that's it now the most important thing that we are going to deal with is the stabilizing transformer now we will see what is the stabilizing transformer 
the stabilizing transformer so here uh, since the, all these having a uh, separate time constants and everything large time constants and the variable various time constants its dynamic response could be poor so in order to improve the dynamic in order to improve the steady state response what is adopted an integral part like integral blockers being used right in the modeling whereas here in order to improve the dynamic response usually a differential block is being used okay so now this is stabilizing transformer here whose input is from this uh, what do you call the exciter main exciter field here comes the input and this is the stable current in the stabilizing transformer primary and you can see that it's a secondary is connected to an amplifier amplifier means voltage is very high over that side okay so we are assuming that the current in the secondary is zero or rather you can say that the current in the secondary is very less or zero okay that is one thing so keeping all these things in mind we are going to model the stabilizing transformer can you say that what would be the like voltage ve is equal to if this is a loop um single kvl while applying kvl you can write that ve is equal to what is the resistance here r let it be r r into ist plus L into DIST by DT where L represent the inductance of the stabilizing transformer R represents what resistance of the stabilizing transformer okay so that's it what we are going to write VE is equal to R into IST plus L into DIST by DT now this secondary voltage of the stabilizing transformer this is the secondary voltage right Secondary voltage of the stabilizing transformer, how you can write it will be the M into DI by DT, where M is the mutual inductance. Okay, where M represents the mutual inductance. Same into DIST by DT. When you take the Laplace transform on both sides, you can say right like this S into M into DI by DT, V is equal to this thing. So now we are uh, calculating this VST is the output, right? Because VST is the voltage of the stabilizing transformer at the out, like secondary. Okay. So you'll be getting an equation like this. That what is it? What does this indicate? VST by or VST voltage of the stabilizing transformer is equal to VE. That is what is VE voltage of the exciter into this block. So the complete block diagram can be represented like this. This is a complete block diagram. You remember when you compare this with our uh, uh, what do you call our figure schematic. This is a reference voltage and this is the terminal voltage which is measured from a potentiometer. You remember poten I mean, potentiometer, not potentiometer, potential transformer. Okay. So on comparing these two, what is produced? An error. Okay. Error is given to an error amplifier whose gain is Ka. What was its output? Its output was V1 of S okay and this v1 of s along with the stabilizing transformer you got v2 of s and uh, this is given to what a uh, uh, scr power amplifier along with that whose gain is this its output is ve which is given to what generator or an alternator sorry generator or an alternator okay whose output along with the load change you remember this block gl along with this book uh, what do you call the load change due to I mean voltage change due to this load you will be getting the final output as output terminal voltage VT okay so that's it here feedback and at uh, what do you call the stabilizing transformer output is equal to VE of S into SKTS all these we have derived so this is a complete block diagram representation of automatic voltage control so what is actually happening here whenever there is change in voltage is sensed what does this control loop does there will be an error signal generated here based on that error signal you'll be having particular gain and finally uh, your excitation that is ve is excitation excitation is controlled in such a way that this error is minimum or thereby regulating the terminal voltage Okay, so compared to this uh, modeling of this load frequency control, automatic voltage regulation control is very easy because 
no modeling is associated with it only some parts which is having a particular transfer function is derived like that okay so this also again can be asked as an essay question this is actually the modeling part and the first figure that you have seen is just a schematic schematic and if you are asked to explain the automatic voltage control mechanism you can simply draw this figure and explain each part if you are asked to model the automatic voltage control you are supposed to draw this figure along with that you have to detail all part with this transfer function and you have to finally draw that final globe diagram this control uh, this entire thing you have to draw so this is all about automatic voltage control i hope this much is clear to you so this fourth module the syllabus is very very less only you are you are having a, a four essays from this the first one is turbine speed governing system explanation the second one is modeling of single area network load frequency control and the third one is load frequency control explanation modeling with the help of a, a two area network and the last essay would be automatic voltage control okay and here short answer anything can be asked as short answer as well uh, and we have seen some short answer questions like uh, why frequency control is required and uh, this short answer like uh, what is the uh, concept behind uh, what do you call active and reactive power generation i mean uh, control and why active power to be maintained in constant why reactive power to be maintained in constant how active power is maintained in constant like that so in any in any form the question can be asked but the concept is only this much if the concept is clear to you, it is easy for you to score full marks from this module. So kindly uh, go through the all the lectures and if any doubt, please feel free to ask. Okay. Thank you.